There's one. There's another. They're everywhere. Save Leak Hospital. It's June 2017 and the campaign intensifies to persuade the morass of powers that be to retain and maintain something that works, that is valued and cherished. 33,000 petition signatories assert so. The chances are, though, despite political assurances, the decision has already been made regarding the future provision of medical services and care for this community. The hospital, discreetly referred to as 251 Ashbourne Road in Edwardian times, is a Grade II listed building of both architectural and historic interest, built as a workhouse in 1838-39. The present-day value of this once not-so-welcoming Victorian institution is now being scrutinised. It seems the conservation and retention of local NHS services, especially for the old, mirrors concerns about looking after our ageing buildings, the well-being of our town's heritage. Our town? Leek, with a hospital worth fighting for. A market and former mill town. Leek, once a royal borough since 1214, and with a population of just under 20,000. Leek, Queen of the Moorlands. The beautiful Staffordshire Moorlands, the setting for a bucket list load of hidden and celebrated natural and man-made gems, on the edge of the renowned Peak District National Park. We've just had a general election where the overall result has reminded us the unexpected may be expected and even as the dust settles that history matters. And why? Well, because just below the surface of the everyday, the mystery of how we got here can be unravelled, revealed and, hopefully, better understood and appreciated. Take this set of shops at the top of the marketplace. This town has lots of such small businesses that are proving so attractive to visitors. The retail therapy experience here is not like that of the average British high street. Quaint? Certainly. Close by there's the clock of the 14th century St Edward's Church that shows 10 to 3. And there's lots of local honey here and hereabouts for tea. But this is neither Disney nor Grantchester, and this is Roger, not Rupert, a man driven to maintaining our local heritage. Come through his former tea room, past his timepieces, to the backyard, and share his discovery of something old and wonderful. This is before, this is cement plaster, which of course has trapped the water so the water has rotted the wood underneath but fortunately underneath as you see uh, it's survived. The history of this little row is being carefully uncovered. Roger's photographs will record this before and after story. Hidden behind relatively recent rendering is the Tudor wattle and daub that Roger is carefully restoring with lime mortar not cement, so that these walls can breathe again. Conversation with Roger inevitably turns to the value of saving, preserving, conserving, looking after, renovating, restoring what this small town of Leek has in abundance, an architectural treasure trove from the medieval to the modern. In fact, those two crosses with ancient Danish runes actually date back to the 9th century. Time to move and a good place to start might be the town's tourist information centre. It used to be just across the road there, at the top corner of the marketplace. Now the office of the local weekly paper, the Leek Post and Times. Perhaps, unfortunately for visitors, the tourist information centre is less prominent. Powers that be have moved this public service down Stockwell Street, above the Use It or Lose It Library, in Joshua Nicholson's magnificent institute, behind Greystones. Do take another look at Greystones from across the road. The symmetrical stone front elevation, hooded porch and mullioned windows. This house, Roger's house, was saved from demolition through the intervention of Thomas Wardle and his great friend William Morris, both founder members of the Society for the Preservation of Ancient Buildings. Realising that we cannot afford to lose our heritage is no modern fad. 
There are many others whose wealth and talents have given, buildings whose design and adornment that make them quite simply irreplaceable. Take Ford House beside us here. And Ballington House across the town. Those other names besides Sir Arthur Nicholson who figure in this town story include Bruff, Wardle, Morris, Burne Jones, Crusoe, and of course William and Son, Lana Sugden, Longdon and Venables, Shaw, Giles Gilbert Scott, and Brealey. Here is a kaleidoscope of their buildings, the Bruff Park Lodge, and the End Terrace Dolls House on Ballhay Road, the former Allsop Memorial Cottage Hospital, the Sugdens Houses in Queen Street, Bruff Nicholson and Hall's Cross Street Mill, and the baronial style Old Police Station on Leonard Street, Shaw's All Saints Church, and while in Finney Street, we should not forget John Corns of Norton House. He featured the All Mod Cons homes for every man he built in Langford and James Streets. In his 1905 book, Modern Housing in Town and Country. Right, now we're upstairs here in the Leaks Art Gallery, Museum and Relocated Tourist Information Centre in the Nicholson Institute picking up an architectural trail leaflet to go with Roger's own Leek's skylines with its sentinels of time, his chimney pot spotting ramble around the town. Opening either of these beautifully illustrated and informative guides must make Leekensians proud and have visitors surprised and even envious of what our small town can surely boast. With trails to follow in hand, we return again to the top of the marketplace, which is best viewed from the upstairs of Foxlow. It's a thriving art centre now, but dates from the late 18th century. The lawyer, Thomas Mills, had it built, though, for most of the Georgian and Victorian times for the Crusoe family home. During the Great War, it became a Red Cross convalescence hospital. And afterwards, in 1919, the headquarters of the Amalgamated Society of Textile Workers and Kindred Trades, and a working men's club. William Bromfield, the ASTWKT Union's General Secretary, had become Leek's first Labour MP in 1918. The 800-year-old marketplace has to be the heart of the town though it does seem that parking cars often has priority over stalls. But just look around at the buildings, the Red Lion, the Bird in Hand, the Butter Market, and of course back up at the Foxlow. Yes, that is a Costa and a Thornton's, you see, for your caffeine and chocolate fix. The nostalgia of a Woolworths, that 20th century retail icon, has gone from the bottom of the marketplace. But, bear in mind, it came and went at the cost of the pub, the Black's Head, whose grand Sugden upper frontage remains above the new Yorkshire trading store. In making way for the wonder of F.W.'s Woolies in 1931, the ground floor facade was dismantled and used to adorn a bungalow by the main road into waterhouses. Still, as we'll see again in Derby Street, the history of buildings is still visible from the opposite pavement when you look above the shop windows. However, just before going from the marketplace and into Derby Street, take time to go inside St Edward's Church to see the stained glass windows of Burne Jones and G.F. Bodley and the beautifully embroidered altar frontals and vestments mainly inspired by Lady Elizabeth Wardle and stitched by the ladies, women and girls of the Leek Embroidery Society. Note two across the way, atop Mill Street, the 17th century coaching inn and its 18th century bow-fronted assembly room. It was first the Green Dragon, then later known as both the Angel and the Swan. 
it has reverted to its original name following the pub's very sensitive renovation by the Weatherspoon Group. Perhaps refreshed, we venture back to Derby Street via Stanley Street, formerly Custard Street. See why Mary Portas and the Telegraph have brought Leek to the notice of the nation with its range of small, independent shops. Derby Street boasts an architectural heritage that is quite unique in its concentration. William Challoner's Georgian office. William Sugden's Trinity Church. The Roebuck dates back to the accession of Charles I. The Cock Inn. Sugden's NatWest Bank. The delightful glass-covered Getliff's Yard. And finally, to the newly created public space that opens up in front of the monument. Sir Arthur Nicholson's magnificent Portland stone clock tower memorial to his son Basil killed at Ypres, and the fallen. What the visitor will not see in this public space, now beloved of an evening by young people with their skateboards, is the strong local opposition this redevelopment engendered. We're sat on the roundabout in Leap, trying to preserve the roundabout and stop it being taken any further away. Um, the people of Leap have to buy this roundabout and they want to maintain it and they will do anything to try and keep it. We're sat here as this quiet protest, non-violent, to ask people from the council to come down and talk to us and tell us why they've gone against the local opinion and started to remove the roundabout. I'm very upset, Joe, very, very upset. This is a better leaks history that should remain for all time. And I have no idea why they're knocking it down. Absolutely. The previous floral roundabout was occupied and defended, and a petition with 11,000 names presented in opposition to the County Council on aesthetic and cultural grounds, and serious concerns that change was being imposed at the expense of pedestrian safety and efficient traffic flow. But other recent changes in the town have been applauded. For example, accommodating a new supermarket for the co-op. involving putting Rosebank House on rollers and moving it 300 metres. However, do not expect the process to be reversed when present owners' waitros move out. And in contrast to the roundabout controversy in front of the monument, there's another example of redevelopment, renovation and conservation that has worked well behind it. The facade of the former Talbot Hotel has been successfully incorporated into the Premier Inn. Leek now has modern, nationally branded accommodation for visitors who, perhaps en route to the nearby Alton Towers or needing a base from which to explore the moorlands and the Peak District, discover the town. An unexpected bonus. As they leave and come out of the hotel, they may be intrigued by base reliefs on the former Leek and Moorlands Cooperative Society building. Another example of how the raised eye can catch a glimpse of the past, our heritage. The shops and bus station of the Smithfield Centre today occupy the site of the former cattle market. The town still retains its livestock auction, itself a rare survivor, that was moved in 1955 to be by the railway that Dr Beeching closed eight years later. Morrison's supermarket sits on the former site of Leak Station. Venture back now to the old marketplace and into Sheep Market, its history evident in the street signage. At the bottom there, on the corner of High Street, is the former Westminster Bank, Bank House, now the base for Support Staffordshire, a volunteering and community service organisation. The bottom floor is currently empty. The Bank House Day Centre, until very recently a lifeline for many elderly folk and their families, could not survive in the current climate of austerity. 
But right at the top of this building, in rooms formerly occupied by the bank manager and his family, is the studio of the Staffordshire Moorland Talking Newspaper for the Blind. From the windows are amazing views of the town's roofscape and Roger's beloved chimney pots. That's St Mary's Spire on Compton, across from the mill that was partially destroyed by fire in 1964, then morphed to an antique emporium in the 70s. Following the rapid decline of the textile industry in the 1980s, some local mill space has been recycled to store and restore antiques and produce old pine furniture. The new busyness and enterprise for all things rustic and vintage. Unfortunately, some former mills remain empty, redundant relics crumbling into ruin, following years of underinvestment, new technology, changing fashion, markets and outsourcing. Others of these often impressive buildings, like the Wellington and Albion mills, have become apartments. Remnants of the former Brough, Nicholson and Hall complex on Cross Street has been converted into an art gallery and workshops, and space for playgroups, dance, fitness and exotic dining. Some buildings, bought by outside property speculators, remain unused. Eyesores ransomed and becoming derelict, like London Mill on the road out to Ashbourne, or this mill behind Compton in London Street. Look across from the architectural delights behind us on Clark Bank. The cottages, Maud Institute, and Grammar School. And down to the big mill on Mill Street, Lana Sugden's masterpiece of Italianate styled manufacturing elegance. This monument may soon become a pile of regret through vandalism and neglect. Time is just not on its side when it comes to finding a practical and viable use for our heritage sites. The map of Leek's conservation area is quite extensive, and on the other side of town, overlooking a beautiful but somewhat forgotten and neglected valley, is Pickwood Wreck. Sandwiched between a modern housing estate, an old hall and woodland, this recreational space has been saved from further housing development by the action of local petitioners, so preserving sight of Leek's unique skyline and cloud end. But is conservation about perspective or just a point of view? Do modern windmills, for example, really detract and spoil the landscape any more than Brindley's watermill compromised the Churnet and its valley in the 18th century? The latter is listed and duly lauded as heritage. And while the not-in-my-backyard cry can be very loud, our future will be determined by the need to use renewable, carbon-free energy. Similarly, take the case of the local residents of the new homes that overlook the Grade 1 listed All Saints. They successfully petitioned the use of the latest UPVC designs to replace rotting windows and fascias without any obvious visual detraction. Is this for some going from the ridiculous to the sublime? Maybe. But it does illustrate how and what can and cannot legally be done. But then, how come Eaton House, a council-affiliated, your housing management office, got the more unattractive UPVC window frame treatment? Formerly Tatton's Mill, it was originally built for William Stannard to a Thomas Wallace design. So Leek has its own Hoover building. But this equivalence was overlooked and unprotected from seemingly inappropriate refurbishment to renovation because it was not a listed building. And finally, in this whistle-stop tour, let's make our way down London Street and the recently listed three-storey weaver's cottages with their shades, down to the traffic lights, passing the 17th century almshouses, and the black-and-white Victorian corner, and Spout Hall and up St Edward Street that we previously spied from Bank House. 
We're turning back along Church and Stockwell Streets down to the entrance of Leak College. To the visitor, the campus development looks an attractive place for young people wishing to further their education. But is that the whole story? For that we need to rejoin our friend Roger, who organised a petition that carried 5,000 signatures to save William Lana Sugden's late Victorian prize-winning design, the Carr Gymnasium Facade, adjacent to the Institute, the masterpiece he built for Joshua Nicholson. He had hoped to save the Arts and Crafts Ensemble Tower, Lana Sugden's last building. Unfortunately, only a small part was retained, but moved to a rather nondescript corner so denying it the historical significance it deserves. Nevertheless, the base reliefs depicting instruction in manual labour, cookery, housework and dyeing give a cultural and historical resonance to the new piazza. Surely it is incumbent on us, townsfolk and local businesses and councils, to get to know the history of our townscape. Look up as you walk, around corners, look at the familiar and see features you've never noticed before. Discover from trails the story of the streets where we live. And to help, here is Leek's first blue plaque installed by Roger and his brother Ian in 2015 on Parker House, under the auspices of the Leek and District Civic Society. Two more have been placed on Clark Three. Bank, well done, well done. <laughs> hey, wonderful. And Greystones. Do take time to look them out and hope that there will be more to punctuate the history of Leek, our town.